uppercut, uppercut, sonic boom! Well, hello there, humans, hippies, earthlings, whoever you are, where if you are, whatever you're doing, and if you're lucky enough indeed to be doing it. So welcome back to Channel on Bushkin. Today's video is proudly sponsored by the big humans over at PUBG Mobile. And the people at PUBG Mobile have given me free ticket to go out and find topics that I think are suitable for my community and would keep them interested and rocking in the PUBG world. And today's topic is aggression. We're going to talk about aggressive gameplay versus passive gameplay and the difference between the extremes and how you can tread that line along the middle. Uh, you don't want to be doing this. It's a stupid thing to do. Uh, I'm very, very lucky to get away with that. That was more good luck than good management. I mean, look at my car. Look at me. There's not a whole lot of paint left on the car and there's not a whole lot of paint left on me. And this bloke performs equally silly uh, feats of PUBG Mobile Tom Foolery as he approaches me. And I'm going to show you a game where I play in what I'd like to call an aggressive matter, but it's controlled aggression. Now that term itself is something that I picked up when I was playing rugby. Um, I was a big second rower that used to bop on people at the back of the ruck, recycle ball and go through things. And our coach would always talk about controlled aggression as a way of playing the game. You don't want to be too aggressive. That can actually be detrimental to the game. You want to take what's on offer from the game itself and put that into your play. And this isn't clever. This is just silly on my part. I've got an AWM. I'm going to try and jump headshot this bloke. And we only get away with it because I don't think he had headphones. Honest to God, I've been shooting at him for ages and he was running around like a headless chook trying to figure out where the rounds were coming from. So the medium I'm going to use to show this to you is a game I played just to the east of here where there's a two-stack squad house, a big barn, all that kind of thing. I mean, this poor bloke's on a bike. This is an aggression. This is just it won't stop when he tells it to. And I push up into there and there's people already holding the structures and there's a lot of people coming up in the circle around it. Now, I've lost more games this season than I've ever lost before at the end of the game. I've come second, third, and fourth a lot more times than I'm used to. And one of the reasons is basically the player base has got better, okay? There are just more players out there that know what they're doing, their movement is better, their tactical game sense is better, and it's harder to get those wins, which is a good thing. But I've also not adjusted my play style to suit that. I've had games where I've had high kill games and I've pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed. And in the end, I've just not respected the opponents. There's nine left alive. We've got five kills. And in the old days, I probably would have just pushed across there. But here, I've heard a car come in. There's two people in there. I'm going to let them engage each other. And I'm just going to take what's on offer. And this is called controlled aggression. You have moved up into a house. You're taking the engagement as it comes. It's not passive. Passive is lying down in a field in the grass, waiting for everyone else to die. So what you've got to remember in situations like this is you're like a data processor. You're looking at what's going on around you. The circle's shrunk considerably. You are featuring seven people. There's an airdrop just down to the west. There's gunshots down there. So there's probably two people in that direction. There's a car at the garage, at the, the warehouse. You're thinking, that's three people and me is four. I'm missing three people. I don't know where three people are. There's going to be some noise behind us. That's a terrible grin, you clown. The second one's better, but it still doesn't accomplish anything. But still, you know, 100% for trying. And here we go. Someone's rotated in behind us. So we're only missing two now. And as we start getting involved with this guy, a car's going to come in as well. Now, you're going to see, I actually push over and we swap houses. That guy to my southwest in that two stack and me, we swap houses. And... It actually becomes a, a very serious game of cat and mouse. I've mollied him there. He's <laughs> he's running. I come in, and as I come in, he leaves. And then a bloke turns up in a car. Now, I'm playing this to win. So I'm absolutely 100% not going to just go running around like a headless chook. I'm processing. We're only missing one guy now. We're missing one person. Hey. And there's still a full seven left. No one's died in all this moving about and throwing Molotovs. He's peeking that window. I know that. I get another molly. I'm pretty sure I've set him on fire again. I push across. Nearly get him with that little jump shot. He goes up all the way to the top of the stairs. My own molly stops me from pushing. And then the moment's passed. I'm aggressive. 
But you've got to control it. What the game is offering me is not what I want to take right there. What the game is offering me is I can push up, but I don't know who's going to overlook. Someone's probably going to start shooting at that bloke. There you go. Someone's shooting at him right now. So anyone running around on top is going to be an open target. Plus, you've got to deal with the guy on top already. And you might kill him, but it's very, very good odds that the aggressor there, the guy standing up, is going to get shot by two different people. So we're just waiting. Now, this is, again, what we're talking about. Controlled aggression is the way you want to play PUBG Mobile. When you are in bigger circles than this, it's a lot easier to be aggressive because there's less opportunity for third parties to get involved. But as the circle contracts, you have to start tempering that aggression and start playing a much more, if I'm perfectly honest and candid, a much more thoughtful game. And that's what I'm doing. I'm holding this little set of paradise here just the stairs oh hang on i think we found our uh seventh person excellent so we've got a fairly good idea now on where everyone is and the guy that was rotating in from the west is now running around and there's a bloke jumping that's our bloke upstairs up and down here he is i am not certain i want to take that now the reason is going to be pretty clear there's more than one person there there's more than one set of footprints there's a guy rotating in from the top there's our bloke rotating in here i don't want to take a gunfight where i end up dealing with three people and watch i just wait for him to come to me and there's another guy behind me so i actually really really liked that bit of gameplay that was 100 not letting myself get pincered in a situation where someone else would be able to take advantage of it i was very quick on my moves we got rid of two people the bloke down there to the west has got rid of another person uh one person and now we're down two people to five this has been really tough circles hard shifted away from me but i got plenty of meds i got plenty of time we've cleared the bloke that we had the little running molly fight with there's still a guy out here to the southeast there's still another guy directly behind me in the grass i'm not certain if there's another guy upstairs because i did hear footsteps so I'm just making sure on that. And then a grand pops exactly where I was before. There's our bloke that was stopping us from rotating out east. We're down to the final four. And we've got to start seriously moving. Now, I, I've actually killed this dude. But I just wasn't sure. So I want to be certain without going up there and sticking my head over the top. I've got plenty of grands. It seems like a good way of being sure. And there you go. I'm, I'm like fine that guy's dead no rotation still got a guy on the grass on the left got to start thinking about this let's get our smokes out before the circle absolutely wallops me and then we're going to start rotating over to that garage i think about the car then i'm like you know what no got plenty of smoke i keep them for a reason let's set ourselves a little path to greatness all the way over there and see how we go now one of the things that you can do if you're in these situations People do sweat a lot. So if it's third person, you're going to find a lot of people just in the grass, generally being negative and passive. Here he is. There's our bloke. He's been in there for a bloody long time, third party peeking that corner. Uh, but we were expecting him, so we got away with that. Two people left alive. And we've been very, very controlled so far. This has been a game where we've picked up four kills just in that squad house area. And a lot of people don't seem to understand this, that you don't have to get all your kills and everything right at the beginning and go out in the blaze of glory. You take what's on offer and you will be very, very happy with the result. Now, I'm going to take... This is a bit of a risky move. I'm going to take what I think is a calculated risk here. And the reason this works for me is because, look, it's late game. You've done the maths. You've, you're processing all the data that's coming in. You know that the last people left are probably snaking somewhere here, or there might be a guy on the right side hiding behind the tractor. If I can clear one of these guys, then it's a one-on-one. -on -one. And then, like, there's not going to be... If I've killed that guy, they're not going to be there. Like, there's no way the two snakes are going to be right next to each other. So just to make sure that things are clear, I jump up on here, and I'm able to take a calculated risk and actually get a good overlook of the situation and i'm always ready to jump off this i'm seeing it making sure if someone is getting pushed on that rotation that's going to happen so i'm pretty sure i know where the last guy is i'm going to drive out here and then because i'm on the left i can park the car just like this and as i jump out unfortunately i overshoot that overcook it but i'm expecting him to be on the right there he is pre-lean the orb miss it mm whatever but instead of pushing to the right where he expects me to go i'm going left and i get cover from the base of the truck and then we jump through it and over the other side 
and we get the win. Controlled aggression, that's what it's all about. If you could like the video, guys, that would help me tremendously. If you liked the video, just give it a thumbs up. Um, I play a lot with Mr. Weedra, and we've talked about this in duos. We lose a lot more this season at the end, and it's because we don't really temper that aggression or we just do it wrong. Um, I'm hopeful that uh, I'm going to improve as a player as the seasons go on. But making these videos actually makes me think about what I do in the game. And I find that after I make a tactical video like this, I go out and I play better. Uh, I mean, I, I kind of tried to make that game work for this kind of a video and it was perfect. Hopefully I do some more of them. We can have some more in the future. If you've got any topics that you really want me to cover off on from a tactical gameplay sense, gameplay sense, then uh, leave a comment below. Um, and I'll get to it. I do try and do as many topics as I can that you grubs uh, pop up there. But yeah, otherwise, just look after yourselves. Stay safe in the battlefield. Be nice to each other. Walk the dog. Eat your veg. And uh, get big, strong, and healthy. <laughs> Until next time, look after. <laughs> ah, I've done all that. Bye for now.